She's an icon, a symbol of the Roaring Twenties, the world's first big female cartoon star, and so much more. She is Betty Boop, and today we will explore her journey from her humble beginning, to cultural icon, to losing it all, and making a comeback. With that, welcome everyone to the history of animation, Betty Boop. In 1929, after the last company out of the Equal Films Inc. filed for bankruptcy, Max and Dave Fletcher formed Fletcher Studios. The two were hoping to turn their previous misfortunes around, and wouldn't you know it, they did just that. With a skeleton crew, they started making industrial films that kept the company afloat until they made a deal with Paramount to produce a revival of the Bouncing Balls song films they had done in the past, only renamed to Screen Songs. The Screen films did fairly well and lasted several years. Around that time, sound films were fairly new and very popular, and Paramount was in need of more sound films, and since cartoons at the time could be produced faster than live action films, Paramount tasked the Fleshers to make a new cartoon sound series. They called the new series, Talk Cartoons, and the first short called Noah's Ark was released on October 25th, 1929. The series did well, but it needed a star, and it was decided that Bimbo, a talking dog, would become the star of the series. He first premiered in the fourth short called Hot Dog and was developed over time. He was well received but never became a star that the Paramount and Fleshers wanted because he was overshadowed by one of his supporting characters, his girlfriend, an anthropomorphic French poodle who would go on to be known as Betty Boop. Betty first premiered in the seventh talk cartoon short called Dizzy Dishes in which she puts on a performance as an unnamed jazz age flapper French poodle. She is barely recognizable in her first appearance compared to her modern incarnation, but people gravitated towards her anyways. She started to appear in more and more shorts. With each short, she became more popular. She finally received a name in the 22nd talk cartoon short called Silly Scandals and made her first appearance as a human in the 28th short called Masquerade. As a human, she lost her floppy dog ears gained hoop earrings instead, and her dog nose became a button-like nose, and with the transformation, her popularity vastly increased. By 1932, Betty was the star of talk cartoons, and within the same year, she received her own cartoon series. Her first series short was called Stop in the Show, and it was really well received, and Betty went on to be known as the queen of the animated screen. Her series did very well and lasted 7 years, ending in 1939 with the short Yip Yip Yippee. Though she doesn't actually appear in this short, it's still considered her final short with Paramount. She also had her first and only color appearance for that era in a short called Poor Cinderella. That was it. She had 90 original shorts and was in some top cartoons and screen song shorts, but would not get any original content for 46 years. That's a very decent run but not as big as other cartoon characters that are not as well known or popular today. So why is Betty Boop still known today and still on merchandise? Well, that's easy. Sex. Well, to say she's considered a sex symbol, that is. At that time, most of Betty's popularity came from adults. She stood out from the cartoon characters at that time and was very sexualized. The female cartoon characters at that time were very comedic, often clones of their male star, only with some female attire and voice, and didn't have defined female forms. Betty, on the other hand, wore short dresses, high heels, a garter, and wore clothes that highlighted her breast and showed cleavage. In her shorts, she was kept innocent and pure, but still had great sex appeal. That innocent sexuality is what drew many adults to her. In a way, she was ahead of her time, as she would fit in nicely with some modern cartoons especially characters in the anime world. Her shorts also put her in sexualized positions with male characters, often trying to peek at her while she changed, or like Betty Boop's Van Boo Isle, where she only wears a grass skirt and a lei that is placed to cover her breasts. Then there's the short Boop Oop A Doop, in which Betty Boop works in a circus. In the short, the ringmaster lusts after her, and goes to her tent and starts sexually harassing her, and threatens to fire her if she does not submit, and she goes on to sing the song, Please Don't Take My Boop Oop A Doop Away. You can say my voice is awful, or my song got too risky, or but don't take my boop away. 
Yeah, the creeper pretty much forces himself on her, but she is saved by Coco the Clown. And when he asks her if she's okay, she answers, No, he couldn't take away my boop oop a doop away. Pretty much saying he couldn't take her virginity. It's extra creepy since she's only 16. Dealing and fighting off sexual harassment also made her a feminist icon, since it's a problem females faced back then and still continue to face to this day. Betty also had several real world problems, as her shorts were affected by the Motion Picture Production Code of 1934, and an infringement lawsuit was filed against Max Flesher and Paramount by Helen Kane, the person Betty Boot was based on. Helen claimed that Betty was hurting her career and exploiting her personality and image. The case was thrown out when it was found that Helen's image and personality traits were also copied from other performers. Specifically an African American performer, Esther Jones, who went by the stage name Baby Esther. It was reported that Kane had seen one of Esther's shows and essentially copied her baby technique of singing and her catchphrase of boop oop a doo. The lawsuit wasn't a problem, but the Motion Picture Production Code of 1934 was. The code gave strict moral guidelines that the studios had to follow. With the code, Betty's sexuality had to be toned down, and by that I mean they pretty much had to remove it. She went from being a carefree flapper to a spinster housewife or career girl, depending on the short, and was given a new supporting cast like Grampy and her puppy Pudgy. The new cartoons were more tame compared to the earlier ones and aimed at a younger audience. This led to a decline in the series and over time her supporting cast started to overshadow her. Her team did try to keep her cartoons interesting by teaming her up with comic book characters at that time, but that didn't work. The final nail in the Betty Boop series was however the swing era, which replaced the jazz flapper era Betty was from. They did try to bring her into the swing era, but they failed, and at one point they tried to replace her with a new character called Sally Swing, which also failed. Sadly, everything they tried to keep Betty relevant just failed and her series ended in 1939. Then, the Betty Boop shorts were syndicated in 1955, but in the 1960s with color TVs making it into households, her black and white shorts were retired since people just wanted to watch color TV. In 1974, a compilation of old shorts called Betty Boop Scandals was released and was very popular. So in order to capitalize on this, they tried to get her original shorts re-syndicated. But at the time, no one wanted black and white cartoons. So they sent the shorts to South Korea, where the cartoons were hand traced frame by frame in color, but this resulted in low quality animation with bad timing. Because of the bad quality, no one wanted these shorts. So they collected them in a compilation film called Betty Boop for President. It wasn't until home video started becoming a thing that Betty started getting recognition again as people started rediscovering her shorts on VHS and Betamax. In the 1980s, she finally got two new animations in the form of TV specials called The Romance of Betty Boop and The Betty Boop Movie Mystery, and she also had a cameo appearance in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. As popular as her shorts were, the thing that really kept her relevant is her merchandise. When she started having a resurgence in the 80s, merchandisers started creating all kinds of products with her image, which was really popular and continues to be so to this day. Sadly, besides the merchandise and the cameos, Betty Boop hasn't had any animated media since the 80s. There was talk of making a feature film in the 90s and then again in 2014, but so far, nothing. On 2016, Deadline announced that a new 26 episode television series focusing on Betty Boop was in production for release in 2018, but so far, that hasn't manifested. As of now, she might not have any new animated media, but it's clear that people still like and relate to the character. She's endured the test of time and continues to be part of our pop culture landscape, from being the queen of animation and the first animated six symbol, to nothing, to something again. Her importance in animation history is clear, and I cannot wait to see what the world has in store for her next. Made a pen and ink, she can win you with a wing. Yahoo! Ain't she cute? Yeah. Sweet.